Hello and welcome to a new Solve Computer Science video. Today I'll show you one of the useful features of BTRFS, RAID Arrays. Compared to RAID Arrays with MDADM, BTRFS, like others, is easy to use because all the necessary tools are included as features of the file system. This means that you'll have to manage one layer instead of two. One disadvantage of BTRFS in particular is worse performance and, for certain RAID layers, even stability. Just note that BTRFS RAID levels cannot be compared one to one with MDADM. There are subtle differences, as explained on various forums and mailing lists on the internet. To create a new RAID 1 array in BTRFS, you need at least two partitions. As with other RAID systems, level 1 makes sense if those two partitions lie on different media. If you put the two partitions on the same disk, you lose the redundancy. One nice feature of BTRFS is that you can add new partitions to an existing RAID 1 array to form a single big array. This is similar in concept to a RAID 1 plus 0 array. To format a partition to a BTRFS file system, you must use the mkfs.btrfs command. On modern CPUs, you may use the xx hash checksum algorithm to get a comparable speed of the default CRC32C, although the latter has CPU instruction level support. You'll get more collision resistance at the cost of less backwards compatibility. You can use the xx hash checksumming algorithm by setting the csum option. The other two options are to set the data and metadata to RAID 1. So, let's run the mkfs command and see what happens. Here, I created two partitions of 16GB each on two different disks. For this showcase, I'll use small partitions, otherwise the balance operation might take a lot of time to run. Once the file system is created, you can mount it normally. To improve performance, you can use mount options such as compression, thread pulls, etc. See also the BTRFS manual. After mounting the file system, we need to run a balance operation. As said earlier, this might take a lot of time depending on the size of the array. You can run the operation in the background using new screen, for example. Now I create a 1GB random pile and check how much space the file system has allocated. The concept of free space in BTRFS is not intuitive, and you can study the document in the video description that explains this aspect in detail. I now create the two partitions on the two drives. On a real system, you should use another set of disks. I am doing this just for demonstration purposes because I don't have other disks at hand. You have to imagine that dev sdc2 and dev sdd2 are dev sde1 and dev sdf1 respectively. As usual, I run the balance operation after adding devices. Now I'm adding a new 20GB file and checking the allocated space for the array. Before trying to reduce the array to two partitions, I remove the big file and create a smaller one of 4GB. As you can see, removing elements from a BTRFS RAID array is as simple as adding new devices. Here. I'm removing the two original partitions, which are dev sdc1 and dev sdd1.
Now I can confirm having only two devices in the array. The new checksum of the first file I created is the same as the original one, so data wasn't modified. This is just an introduction of the feature present in BTRFS. Although some of them are still experimental, I think this file system has lots of potential. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye bye!